Hey y'all, do y'all want to hear a scary story? This is the story of Mary Bell. A scary tale from true crime case histories. Let's check it out, y'all. And this, then I'm going to give my reaction. Mary Bell. In the 1960s, the Scottswood area of the town of Newcastle upon Tyne, England, was a rough area that was neglected and full of derelict houses and slums. The area was referred to as Rat Alley. Many of the buildings were being torn down to make way for newer high-rise flats. However, despite its roughness and social problems, the community felt safe and children roamed unsupervised and commonly played in the broken-down homes. One of the children that roamed the area was 10-year-old Mary Bell. Mary was a well-known bully in the area that the other children were clearly afraid of. Mary's teachers took note of her as well. Though she was a smart and clever girl, she was better known for her sadistic side. One of her teachers recalled Mary putting a cigarette out on another student's cheek simply because she got a better grade than her. Even though Mary admitted doing it, nothing was done to address her actions. On Saturday, May 11, 1968, Mary and her friend Norma Bell, no relation, picked up a small boy aged three and told him they were taking him to buy candy. The little boy was found later dazed and bleeding and wandering the streets. The police were called, but again no action was taken. The very next day, the Newcastle police received a complaint from a mother that Mary had tried to strangle her daughter in a playground while Norma held the girl down. They, they, Mary, look, why they, they should have put her, you know, there's some people that need to be put out their misery when they're young, you know, because it saves the world a whole lot of grief later on. Like, if people would have just saw how sick Jeffrey Dahmer was, when he was picking up roadkill when he was like a kid, somebody should have offed him then, you know, because, he, you know, it would have spared the lives of the people that he killed. When you see crazy kids, you can't put them in therapy. You got to just take them out back and shoot them. Yet again, this is a complaint against a 10-year-old girl. I did not mean that. Don't go screw around and shoot. This is crazy. I got to put this disclaimer. Don't shoot no kids. Hey, y'all, don't do that. So nothing was done by the police. On May 25th, the day before Mary's 11th birthday, Mary found four-year-old Martin Brown playing outside with his friends. She Boy, told yeah. the boy she wanted to play a game with him and took him to one of the nearby derelict houses. She took Martin upstairs and told him that he had a sore throat and she could make it better by massaging his neck. Mary placed her hands around his throat and strangled the life out of the boy. Oh, Lord. A few hours later, a construction worker found the boy's lifeless body in the building and called for help. A neighbor contacted Martin's mother, who ran to the home to find him pale and lifeless with no marks on him. Just a trickle of blood coming from the corner of his mouth. When police investigated the death, they noticed there were some pills lying around the upstairs of the house. Initially, they thought that may have been the cause of death, but later it was ruled out and considered a natural death. Mm -hmm. They thought the boy may have died of fright because he had previously fallen down a flight of stairs. The local newspapers referred to Martin Brown as the Rat Alley Boy. In the days following Martin's death, Mary showed up at his mother's door. I've come to see Martin, she said to his mother. Martin's mother, assuming she didn't know Martin had died, told her that Martin was dead. Hmm. Mary said, Oh, I know that he's dead. I want to see him in his coffin. What? Martin's mother was shocked and slammed the door. As the days went by, Mary actually told family members and other kids at school that she had killed Martin Brown, hmm. but nobody believed her. In her First of all, how is a four-year-old playing outside by itself? With no supervision, what year is this, this? This what year did it take place? How did they have a four-year-old run around playing? By, where was his mama at? Where she could be able to to lure lure the boy away? You know, 
Her school notebook, she drew a picture of Martin's body, the way it was lying in the house, and the bottle of pills next to his body. Mm. Next to the pills was the word tablet, and also a workman finding the body. She also wrote in the notebook, There were crowds of people beside an old house. I asked what was the matter. There has been a boy who just lay down and died. All of this went completely unnoticed by authorities until much later. Two days after Martin's death, there was a break-in at a nursery. Police found four pieces of paper with scribbles that said, I murder so that I may come back. What? Another said, We murder, watch out. Yet another said, We did murder Martin Brown. Fuck what? off, you bitch. What? Police, however, dismissed these notes as a childish prank. Martin's death was blamed on the Rat Alley slums, and there were protesters that marched down the streets claiming that the clearance of the old buildings wasn't being done properly. Mary Bell participated in the protests on July 31st. Mary's home life was not like other children. Mary's mother, Betty Bell, was a well-known prostitute. And this is a kid that's doing this. Ain't this crazy? It's like a movie. ...in the area with a specialty in bondage and sadomasochism. Betty would bring her clients home where Mary would witness the BDSM acts and at what? the age of four, Mary was forced to engage in sex acts with her clients. Oh, Lord. Betty... Oh, that's what drove her ass crazy. At the age of four, that's what drove her crazy. Oh, this is... Oh, this is sick had made repeated attempts to kill Mary within her first few years of life, giving her pills as sweets, then later claiming she accidentally took her sleeping pills. Other family members became suspicious when Betty claimed Mary had fallen from a window. Betty made other attempts to give Mary away to relatives, then later changing her mind and taking her back. Betty was well known for going away for weeks on end, leaving Mary alone and unsupervised. Mary's father, Billy, was no better. Billy was rarely there, and when he was, he was drunk and physically abusive to both Betty and Mary. Mm. It's no wonder Mary turned out the way she did. Mm. Two months after Martin's death, Mary struck again, this time with her friend Norma. The public at this time still had no idea there was a killer amongst them. Mm -hmm. They thought Martin's death was the fault of the development companies. Children still played unsupervised in the streets, even at the youngest of ages. Yeah, as I'm saying, this had to have happened back in the day because four-year-olds running around by themselves, this must have been a long time ago back when people would let a two-year-old just run outside by themselves and the other kids would supervise a two-year-old. You know, they had times like Four -year -old that. Four-year-old Brian Howe was playing by himself, watching the demolition of the houses of Rad Alley when Mary and Norma approached him and took him to an area referred to as the Tin Lizzie, a small wasteland. When Brian was reported missing a few hours later, police found him half naked in a spread eagle position with a pair of scissors and a lock of his hair found near his body. Police found that he had been strangled, cut on the legs, punctured on the calves, and cuts on his penis in an attempt to cut it off. There was also Damn. a letter cut into his stomach M, almost as if she wanted to get caught. Exams determined that the cuts were inflicted after death. Still at this point, nobody connected the two deaths. Days later, as Brian's coffin was carried out of his home, a police officer noticed Mary smiling. When investigators realized the cuts on Brian's stomach was an initial, then they knew they were looking for a child, and now they assumed that the two murders were linked. Police wow. announced in a press conference that they were looking for a child, and Mary seemed to want to draw attention to herself. She was listening intently, right at the front of the press conference. Because Mary had previously bragged about Martin's killing, word got around to police, and they started to look into Mary. Speaking to Mary's father, Billy, Mr. Bell initially refused to let police speak to her, but she was eventually brought in for questioning. Mm. Police had by that time spoken to a nine-year-old boy who had witnessed the strangling of Brian Howe. Mary denied the killing and said, Send for my solicitor. The community initially felt sorry for Mary, 
assuming at only Mr. 10 years old that she had no idea what she had done. Just she was, wait a minute, I thought she was older than that. She was only 10 years old doing all these murders? And the, damn. Despite Mary's did Well, she only did two, but still, for 10 years old and getting away with Niles, the shit. the evidence piled up. Police made the connection between Mary and the notes that were found two months earlier. Speaking to her teachers, police found her school notebook where she had drawn a picture of Martin Brown's body with the word tablet next to the body. The information about the tablets, pills, found near the body had not been released to the public. They knew mm. then that Mary was the killer. Mary's wow. friend Norma, when questioned, admitted the murder but claimed it was all Mary. Mary Bell was standing in front of the house house when the coffin was brought out. I was, of course, watching her. And it was when I saw her there that I knew I did not dare risk another day. She stood there laughing, laughing and rubbing her hands. I thought, my God, I've got to bring her in. She'll do another one. Detective wow. Chief Inspector James Dobson, Newcastle Police. On August 8, 1968, Mary was charged with murder. Oh, this happened in the 60s. Oh, see what I'm saying? This happened back in the... People would let their two-year-olds go outside and play. Unsupervised. Detectives were stunned by Mary's intelligence level. She was clearly cunning despite her age, denying accusations and seemingly anticipating the questions before they were asked. The local police were as disturbed as anyone over the arrests. They had never encountered offenders of such a young age. During mm. the trial, Mary was nonchalant, as if she had no idea what she was accused of. Dancing near her seat and turning around during proceedings, asking for candy. Normally in England, the mm. accused will sit alone in a box. However, because of the extraordinary circumstance of having such a young defendant, the judge allowed the lawyers to sit with their client. The trial lasted nine days, in which Mary and Norma were allowed to state their case. The prosecutor, Rudolph Lyons, started the proceedings by linking the two murders, suggesting that Brian and Martin's murders were done by the same people. Handwriting experts were brought in to analyze the confessional notes found in the nursery and the drawings from Mary's school notebooks. The jury was then told of how Mary and Norma morbidly taunted the victims' families by asking to see bodies. Forensic wow. evidence was also presented in the form of gray fibers from Mary's wool dress that was... Her little ass was a little demon. She was a little demon, dude. dude. It sounded like a grunt. And to be that smart at 10, to be able to conceal that and not tell her mom. But, you know, I'm, the, man... And then they go in like the roof and it's this, the one to see the body after. It's discovered on the bodies of both victims. Maroon fibers from Norma's skirt were also found around Brian's shoes. Yeah. The prosecution presented a strong case against both girls. As the trial moved along, it became clear that Mary was a dominant figure between the two girls and Norma was simply a follower. Norma was clearly overwhelmed by the trial and observers took pity upon her while Mary would give quick and witty remarks as if she hadn't a care in the world. Wow. Prosecutors also called on psychiatrists who examined Mary and testified that she suffered from psychopathic personality disorder. She's a little demon. Demonstrated a lack of empathy and was liable to act on impulse. The mm. jury deliberated for five hours and... A.K.A. she was a little demon. ...returned with their verdict. Norma was considered simple-minded and was acquitted of the charge of manslaughter. Mary was found not guilty of murder, but found guilty of manslaughter and was sentenced to lifetime detention. What? The jury and trial observers heard nothing of Mary's home life and how that may have affected her actions. Because of Mary's young age, authorities wanted to attempt to rehabilitate her rather than punish her, believing that Mary didn't truly understand what she had done. She was too young to go to a mental hospital, so Mary was assigned to a secure school where she could be given constant attention. The people of Newcastle agreed and felt sympathy for Mary because of her young age and upbringing, despite her horrible crimes.
Mary spent 12 years in detention. She spent six years in Red Bank Juvenile Institution, where she was the only girl with 22 boys. Oh. During her time there, she continued to blame others for her crimes, never admitting her own offenses. Mary's mother, Betty, visited her in school, but Mary eventually blamed her for the crimes, writing her the following letter. Please, ma'am, put my tiny-minded ease. Tell the judge and jury on your knees. They will listen to your cry of please. The guilty one is you, not me. I am sorry it has to be this way. We'll both cry and you will As go great. away. Tell them you are guilty, please. So then, ma'am, I'll be free. Your daughter, May. Betty Bell gave a TV interview years later, clearly broken and suffering from drug and alcohol addiction. Mm -hmm. In 1980, at the age of 23, Mary was released and given a new identity. She had a daughter while she was in captivity, and the media eventually tracked her daughter down, who knew nothing of Mary's crimes until she was told. Wow. In 2003, Mary and her daughter won a case in the high court, which then gave them both anonymity for life. Wow. That's crazy. That is, wow. Mary Bell. Ten-year-old leader. <laughs> the YouTube audience. Wow, at ten years old, and the way wow, this is this seems like this is probably where they got the movie uh Megan. What's that? What's that movie called? Not Megan. I haven't seen Megan. I heard it's pretty good. What's that other movie? Um, the name of it, The Omen, like uh Damon from The Omen. Or oh, no, The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin. Remember that? He was going around killing people. <clears throat> wow, that's crazy, man. So what do y'all think about the story of Mary Bell? Leave your comments. Give me the thumbs up button. And subscribe to Griot. Appreciate it.